Hello and welcome to the first part of my ARP X restoration series. I'm quite excited about this one because I really like the filter sound on this synth and I've also gotten a really nice um, version. Um, the panel work on the top is nearly flawless um, and general condition is really really good. The keyboard's in excellent condition. Um, panel works great and there's also another exciting thing which is these LED sliders um, you will find them most likely on the TTSH which is the ARP2600 clone um, but I thought that I would try and put them in my axe so that's exciting um, they don't fit in the circuit as they are, the pinout's different, um, but I plan to overcome that. So I'm sure there will be a video about that later on in this series. But for today, we're going to have to deal with what most service technicians and restoration enthusiasts have to deal with when they first receive an ARP, and that is that the power supply is crap. And it's so bad that it blows most of the tantalum capacitors inside the synth and renders it practically useless. So, that brings me to these guys over here. Um, so for those of us involved in repair a lot, um, we will recognise this board straight away. It's the power supply to most portable ARP synthesizers like the Omni, the Axe, the Odyssey, um, no doubt some others. Um, its design was okay but in my opinion was probably fairly cheap for the time as there were um, voltage regulators available up could have used but they didn't. Um, they've also severely underrated the capacitors here um, and on since this age the electrolytic capacitors um, are all degraded by now anyway so it doesn't help that these are underrated. Um, it does have a regulator chip but it's not a positive and negative regulator like what we're used to in linear power supplies. Um, it's more or less a constant voltage source that uh, has a few features that can act as a voltage regulator or a current regulator. Um, this board does have current regulation on it. It has some okay voltage regulation, but really it's not up to the standard of the synth. And there are a lot of transistors used in this circuit to boost its capacity to supply the current that's needed. Um, so a lot of the work is done by the transistors, not by this chip, and so it's consequently not that great. It's not very good at ripple rejection or um, spike protection or noise rejection or um, any of that kind of stuff that we're used to in new regulators. Um, so I just make a new one. Um, so I have a much larger transformer, can supply much more current. Uh, the modern electrolytics for the same size, you can get much more capacitance in them. So these are four or five times larger. In fact, they may even be 10 times larger. Uh, 250, yeah, and these are 2,200. So they're nearly 10 times larger capacitance. Um, the two regulators I've used, separate positive and negative regulators. Um, they're the LM317 and LM337. So they're not the negative and positive 15 volt regulators. They're actually a low dropout um, adjustable regulator. So there's some trim pots here that adjust the voltage. Um, this will supply much more current. It will regulate the voltage much, much better. It will have much better spike protection spike suppression, it'll have much better ripple rejection. Um, the list goes on. It's infinitely better power supply 
then the other one so I will be disposing of this one way or another um, so after fixing the main problem of the synthesizer we can then fix the symptoms caused by that main problem and that, are, that is uh, the tantalum capacitors and this is the 4075 filter board um, so this is located in this orientation on the circuit board so it's actually in upside down um, so I'm going to have to replace these tantalums and at the same time I will upgrade the uh, frequency response by changing uh, four of the resistors on here which were 4.7k one for each stage of the filter uh, to the new value of 2.2k I've replaced the resistors that affect the filter cutoff range so it's these four here um, so it's R2, R7, R12 and R17 so I don't know exactly which one's which but it's these four so they were 4.7k and they've been changed to 2.2k there's a couple of 15k resistors at the top that I've changed as well in fact I'm going to rebuild most of the board um, just because it's a good idea uh, the problem with that good idea though is the tracks on the back they come off really really easily um, in fact they lift off with almost no effort at all it's almost like they're not attached to the circuit to the to the PCB at all it's like the tracks are made of solder themselves um, so you gotta be really careful when you heat them up and there's a lot of components where they've bent it over on a right angle and it's just really difficult to get it out of the board without pulling the track off because you've got to heat it up and then pull really hard from the other side and wiggle around and while keeping the soldering iron on the pad it heats up so much that it eventually comes off um, so I find the trick to do it without pulling the pads off um, is to cut down that um, leg from the component that you you're wanting to remove so just cut it down as much as you can first with pliers so that there's it's it's almost level with the surface of the pad so you've removed all of the leg that's on this side of the board and then add some solder and adding solder like a big solder blob um, it just helps um, freshen up the solder I guess and keep a lot of thermal mass there so it doesn't cool down when you remove the soldering iron and you can just pull it out from the other side fairly easily then so I found that's worked uh, in a few places um, so what I'm going to do now is probably the hardest thing which is to remove the op amp in the middle now there could be a problem with this op amp I don't know um, but I'm going to replace it anyway I'm going to put a, a, a socket on there so that I never have to pull the old chip out of the board again um, so what I'm going to do first is just cut these pins down as far as I can go uh, and then use uh, some pliers from this way and heat across one side at a time and pull one side up and then heat across the other side and then pull the other side up and that should be able to get it out and hopefully I'm left with the pads on the other side but we'll see so I got it out it was actually heaps easier than I thought um, after cutting the legs really short um, I just put the soldering iron along the track ran it up and down the, the pads and then across the other side ran it up and down and the chip came out surprisingly easy and it's back in excellent so it's on its socket now it's on its IC socket um, I took the opportunity to replace uh, the capacitors that were around the op amp um, they were metal film caps um, but you don't know if they're okay until you take them out to measure them and once you've got them out you might as well replace them with, with some newer ones so that's what I did okay so skipping ahead a little 
I've um, replaced a lot of the resistors now. Um, I just found that the tolerance on the ones that were in there were um, quite bad. I mean, they were at least 20% out. I mean, some of the uh, 220 ohm resistors were like nearly 260 ohms. Or like over 250. So um, <clears throat> with that much variation, I thought, well, it's probably no harm putting in the 1% resistors. So I did as many as I could. Uh, I left the 22 mega ohm ones in because I didn't have any. Um, and I've added a Zener diode at the top here, 6.8 volt Zener diode, which is to correct um, a fault in the um, in the conditioning supply for the negative rail, which is in the service notes. Um, so uh the only other thing i did was the uh transistors so i did a few of these transistors as well so that's as much as i'm going to do with this board um <clears throat> i'll put it back in the main board now and just test it make sure it's okay um, but the next thing i'm going to do is um I just put the power supply that i've built into the axe and calibrate that okay so i've made a hole in the panel to match the iec connector which also has a line filter in it and an emi filter um, so that's a big improvement over the original and something really good actually is the panel mount fuse holders um, they match the exact hole where the uh, mains cord came out of originally. You can see this hole here. That's where the mains cord was. It's kind of a, it's not a, exactly a round shape, it's an oval shape with flat sides. And the um, external fuse holders have the same oval shape with the flat sides. So it fits in perfectly. So that's a really good fit. Um, so I've got an external access point for the fuse now, which I didn't have originally. Okay, so the power supply is now back in. And I've installed the line filter. And I fixed the switch. So um, I've made a video of how to repair that switch. That'll probably be the next video. And I've had to add a resistor to turn the bulb on because that bulb in the switch is a 120 volt bulb. And when I changed my uh, transformer, I've only got 240 volt windings, so I had to add a resistor to step the voltage down so I could get the lamp. Um, power supply is working. Um, I'll just turn it on. Let's see. There you go. So I've measured uh, plus minus 15 volts and you can see I've got the light on. Um, so we're ready to do a quick test. Um, the first thing is just to check if the resonance was working after I replaced those components in the filter. So that's working now, which is good. But, just turn that down, um, the ADSR is still not working properly. You can hear the note change when I release the key. And it doesn't even work if I put the release all the way down. The sustain up, I should get a note. Well, that works now, that's intermittent. And the decay doesn't work at all. The attack is. The attack's not very good either. So there's still a few problems, and also the sample and hold doesn't work. should be able to get some changes in pitch but it 
doesn't happen. So the sample and hold's not working as well. Uh, so there's still a few things to fix on the circuit board. But I fixed the resonance, so that was a good thing. And I fixed the power supply. Um, so uh, mission one is complete. Um, now I can move on to um, fixing those um, other things. And once all of that is repaired, then I'll put in the LED sliders. So I'll probably do some work on the circuit board now.